All right, today we're going to do something I've never done for, I don't know, for a master naturalist group. I figured I would try it. I tried to look and see whether these tracks, you know, the actual tracks that I have, I did not cut off the bottoms of all these animals' feet or anything. Um, <laughs> but I, I thought I would just go over some of these. I mean, the books that I have, I could probably read these four track books, spend a year reading and researching, and there's tons of other stuff I don't know. But, I mean, obviously, you know, I'm like a kid. I run around looking at poop and tracks and whatever, sounds. And so I just thought I would share some of these things with you that I have. Um, I did make a couple plaster things just to kind of show you. Because a lot of times you look in a track book or you see tracks, and it's like you have no... No reference for size or shape or anything. So, <clears throat> and just like the grasses, all, all these things can be different. So they can be different sizes. I mean, I have um, fox tracks in here that are bigger than a coyote track. But, you know, coyotes are not very big anyway. You know, everybody's, oh, my God, I see a coyote. Big deal. It's a little dog, you know. Um, <laughs> And then there's a red fox, and then the gray fox is, you know, like the size of a large Mancoon cat, you know. Um, so I'll just show you some of the uh, books that I like to use. I mean, this used to be the old staple because this is all there ever was. Um, but now there's way more books. But um, in here, you know, a lot of times it'll give you things like, I'm just turning randomly, but... Um, it, it'll give you like how they walk, how they run, the spread of the distance. Um, also, wonderful scat right here, you know. Um, and then a little bit about their tracks, tracking, and then it. There's a lot of info in here too to read, so that's that's a good one. Um, and then there's these these newer ones, and these are like fantastic to the point of I, I want like to retire and just sit and read these and walk through the woods, you know, um, because the, the info that's in these is amazing, a little bit overwhelming. Um, now, mammal tracks and sign, you understand that. Now, here's the weird ones. So when you look at this, you're looking at like, it's like, what? You're going to identify a salamander's track next to a water? But it does go into a lot of other things. Um, I mean, the famous picture on the front right here is a sidewinder rattlesnake, you know, so you have things like that. But um, I do have this as a, as a track, and so <clears throat> see if you can figure out. It's kind of hard to see that, but does anybody have any idea what that might be? And I just showed you reptile, so... Sea turtle. Yeah, it's a sea turtle plowing through the sand. You can see it a lot better if it was in front of you and it wasn't glaring. But, um, but yeah, there's, uh, there's all kinds of cool things in here. Um, and then another really weird one, tracks and signs of insects. Um, now, you're going to see a lot more signs of insects than actual tracks. But um, they do have a beetle that we have here. So there's certain things like where you're looking where you might see a beetle that drags his butt and one that picks his butt up. So if you know what kind of insects you, and that's like with all these things, you kind of got to know what you're picking from so you have some multiple choice. Because if you don't have multiple choice, you might be hard pressed to understand and figure out what half these things are. Um, yeah, like uh, alternating track groups with drag lines. I don't know if you can really see that, but um, but it has, you know, a picture of things like that. Um, <clears throat> all right, and then you have bird tracks and sign. Um, that's a little bit more understandable, but, you know, to most of us, a duck is a duck is a duck, right? You know, um, <clears throat> but to understand some of these categories, um, so there's game bird tracks, like most of you might know what a turkey track is. Uh, you know, if you have chickens, you know that kind of uh, scenario. But um, some of it is knowing um, how the feed are. 
Um, so this one up here says Toady Palmate. I don't, I don't know if this thing focuses, but it's not focused on that. But um, Toady Palmate is where all four toes are webbed, and that would be like a cormorant or a pelican. Um, zygodactyl is, would be like this. Let me show you. It would be like a, a woodpecker, um, where they're basically an X. I know I have one. There we go. Um, so that's a woodpecker. You're probably not going to see that track, and probably your woodpecker, whoever had that one, <laughs> probably this big, right? <coughs> um, so that would be a woodpecker. One of the ones that I wanted to show you out of this book is one that we have here, and you might see this track, and it really could puzzle you. You're going to think that a chicken broke its toe and it flipped around or something, but that is a a roadrunner. So they're not a complete X, but kind of like an X. Um, so a roadrunner. So it, you got to like kind of take them in perspective. Like that's not actual size, whereas the ones that I made here are actual size. So that is from a great blue heron. Um, and this one would be hard to tell. It looks like any little bird, you know, cardinal blue jay. This one's a blue jay, but you know, it'd be hard to tell. And then here's a, a duck and a goose. So <clears throat> um, we won't do any more on birds, but um, <clears throat> and then here's another book. Uh, and there's, I mean, there's, I have so many books. I, there's no way I was bringing them all in here. Um, track, reading, signs. And it, it just, everybody has a different approach to this. It's just sometimes kind of cool to read different things. And some people are more in the, you know, the Northwest or something like that. But I thought I would show you a couple things um, that are confusing here. So I figured we go with cat and dog first. Um, so here is a house cat. Okay, now you know this can vary a lot. <clears throat> but cats have the ability, so here's a, here's a house cat uh, rubber print. Um, so, you know, it has some of this part on it too, you know, because cats sometimes, it depends how they're stepping, and whether you're seeing it in so snow, sand, mud. Um, but cats are never gonna show a claw. Cats' prints are generally rounder, where dogs might be a little bit longer, you know, this way. Um, and the other thing cats can do that other animals can't do as much is they, they have the ability to spread their toes out more or less. And so the tracks can look completely different. And it depends if they're walking, running, you know, leaving prints all over your car. Um, <laughs> You know, neighbors' cats that climb all over my car and then pee on it or whatever. Um, <clears throat> so th this would be like a house cat just for size. And then the other thing is a lot of the prints, um, the front feet are actually larger than the back feet. Now, on dogs and cats, that's a subtle difference. Like a badger, that's a huge difference. Um, and then you have things like, beaver, sea otter, things like that, where the back feet are just huge compared to the front. Um, so here's, all right, I'm going to try and get these so that they're side by side, but um, you're not going to ever see that, are you? Okay, I won't do that. Um, okay, so here's a bobcat. Now this one, its feet are kind of splayed out a little bit, but bobcats are not very big animals either. I mean, they're 25 to 30 pounds at the most, but that is like, I think, almost pure muscle on a bobcat. I mean, they, they can look pretty amazing. And then this is a mountain lion or a cougar. So this one isn't really huge, um, but I do have a, a print over here. So this is what, <coughs> and unfortunately, they don't show up under here, but this is what it would look like. Um, and then, you know, and then this animal, you know, this can get upwards of 200 pounds. So, um, so that's what it can look like. And then in where they have them open, 
And I still have not seen one of these in the wild yet, so if you see one, I need to be the first call. Um, <coughs> so this is, um, this is one that's kind of open and showing the claw, which you would rarely ever see. Um, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't really see anything like that. Now, I have seen tracks of cougar in um, the Guadalupe Mountains and then out in New Mexico. Smelled them, seen scat, seen drags, never seen the critter, um, but I sure would like to. But uh, <clears throat> if, you, um, if you just size alone, I mean, you know, a lot of you kind of differentiate a lot between these two because. Most people that think they see, you know, a cougar have seen a bobcat, you know, track or something. But um, you have to consider the substrate that things are in. Um, they're round, and um, don't forget cats can splay out a little bit more. Now the dogs, um, okay, so I'm going to see if this shows up. All right, so this is, okay, this is a little gray fox. So this is our typical fox. And there's my finger. So, you know, they're cute little guys. Um, now, <coughs> a, all right, here's a track. All right, here's a red fox. Now, red fox, I've never seen any up here. They're more, I call them out on the flats, the other side of 35. Um, and I know when I used to track these in the snow up north and look for them and, you know, take pictures of them and stuff, their feet were, it was always like a little round circle. And occasionally you would see a little bit of track mark, you know, a uh, claw mark in them. But because they're running all the time, they're pretty filed down. Whereas, you know, like that big dog that's running around out here, the Pyrenees, probably if it left tracks, it would not leave much claw either because it's running around filing its nails. Um, but here, here's a, a dog. Now, of course, we know my Boston Terrier wouldn't have feet like that. It would be smaller. You know, Cujo out there, you know, he's, his feet are going to be more like that. Um, <coughs> and then here is a gray fox, but this is a bigger gray fox. So it's one that maybe stepped in mud or something as opposed to that one right there. And you can kind of see how those have kind of splayed out and these have not. So. Um, so, yeah, and in this book, it actually explains, like, all the different toes to look at, um, the middle pad to look at. There's tons of stuff to look at. And then here's a coyote. Um, and the front feet are bigger than the back feet because they do a lot of digging. Um, may not be as clear on some as others, but you might get a situation where they're drinking water and they park at one spot and then you can really get to see their feet. Also, um, the dog family, they're going to spend a lot of time going on actual trails and the only time I've ever really seen coyotes or foxes, you know, foxes will go through the woods a lot, but you know, they just, they leave all their scat on a trail, on your driveway, um, and they're, you know, kind of marking their territory. Where, you know, some of the cats, they might slink around a little more, you know, through the woods too. So, um, all right, let me show you a couple other little things since you mentioned. <coughs> okay, so I get the animal, I pet them, and then I... Uh, <laughs> get some plaster ready and I said come on sweetheart put your foot in there um, <clears throat> now so these um, I was making some plaster ones and I was using I was using these um, you can make like the way that they make these is they go out they have an animal and they make a basically like a negative of it you know and then they'll make one of these with it you know after they make that they'll put it in there and then they'll pour a, use it as a mold you know and then but this one I just had a possum track so then I just went ahead and just put it in there but this is a good characteristic possum because you got that thumb you know um, and then this is what it would look like um, and you know Depending on the animal, how they're hopping, running, or whatever, 
depends on how they, like for instance, on the rabbit, if they're running, you're going to see the, it's going to look weird because you're going to see the back feet in front of the front feet um, when they're bounding. And um, this is the front and back foot, you know, there isn't much to that, you know, it looks like a hairy mess, right? Um, and that would be the same with our jackrabbits, but, you know, there's not many places to leave a track here, you know, in a lot of places. So I have not seen any tracks of jackrabbits at my house because there's just no place for them to leave a track. But a jackrabbit would be a little bigger than this. This would be an eastern cottontail. Now, the further north you go, the b tracks get bigger, like an eastern cottontail in Wisconsin is going to be bigger than one here. So, because the animal is bigger. So, <coughs> those are things to consider. All right. Now, we got these. <coughs> See if you can figure these out. Okay. The, this is something that's been dying on the road lately. Yeah, my roadkill list this month has been deer and raccoon have been number one. And then I've gone to uh, skunk porcupine and I got one ringtail last week and it was on Route 12 out here and my span is from Wimberley to San Marcos on Route 12. That's my, that's my judgment corridor. Um, <coughs> so this is one of the ones that made that list. Anybody know who that is? It's a skunk. Um, <coughs> and we do have a couple different species of skunks and of course it depends on the size. But one of them kind of looks like little I don't know, little kid's feet or something. Um, and then you'll see some claw up front if it's deep enough. Um, all right, what about this one? This one is, I didn't really do a good job doing this one, but this is a squirrel. And <clears throat> squirrel would be hard because a lot of them, um, you're not going to see the tracks. Like, you know, I had the opportunity to do some stuff up north, you know, in the snow, and that was a lot of fun um, to track stuff. But um, this one, of course, the back feet are bigger than the, um, the front. Okay, and here's the rabbit. This is what those tracks look like, the eastern cottontail. <coughs> okay, this is another one that made the, the hit list recently. Porcupine. Who said that? Yeah. Okay, so it's a porcupine. They also have the, the cool little pads on the bottom of their feet that look kind of cute. Um, and then they've got longer claws for climbing. And, ooh, this is a tough one. Hmm. <laughs> I didn't get crazy and do pronghorn or something, you know. Um, but this is a white-tailed deer. Um, all right. Raccoon, yeah, the one that kind of looks like little human hands and little human feet. So, um, and then, you know, just with raccoon, you know, like just with the scat, you find it near water, you find them near areas where they can elevate their scat or climb a tree and poop all over your deer stand or whatever. Um, okay, all right. <clears throat> It's one of those uh, trick things. It's a raccoon again. <laughs> I just did it different. <laughs> there it is. Survey says raccoon. <clears throat> okay, another trick one, porcupine again. Um, so I just thought I'd throw that in there. Um, the track that you're not going to see around here, oh, I don't know if I grabbed it. Yeah, okay. That you won't see here, but you might see maybe in East Texas and very possibly in Big Bend is a black bear. Um, so here is the back foot, and here is the front foot. So, <clears throat> and they are cute. Have all of you seen a black bear in the wild yet? <laughs> They're cute. <coughs> um, All right, you guys are ready for a test? What, what is my time? Am I okay or I don't even know? Huh? Wow, I need to have that recorded. Christy hardly ever says that. <laughs> then I'm good. Wow. <clears throat> okay. 
test time. All right. Oh, man. All right. You got to see it. You guys all have binoculars, right? <coughs> okay. So, all right. There's a, uh, oh, maybe I can do that. It's this one right here. All right. Let's see if that works. Golly, I will need that five minutes. <clears throat> okay. And I do have a, a bunch of um, tracks in here. Um, like I left these out so you can look at the, um, if you want to pull them out of here. They do have that rubbery feel to them. They're, you want to wash your hands after you touch these. But, um, but like there's, uh, like if you want to see what a coyote foot looks like. And of course, this is only Wiley Coyote and not, you know, Bob or something. So you don't know who's who. Um, but then I have all my tracks done by Predator and Prey when I used to do this with kids. So, um, <clears throat> okay. So we, we can kind of look through these um, and see who's who. So there's a, a cloven hoofed animal up here, um, and there's one here. So then, you know, you just have to pick between moose and uh, deer. And I do have moose tracks. I didn't bring them, but they are huge. And, it, and it's not the ice cream. Um, it, but they're, they're gigantic. <coughs> um, so the only bird on here is a rough grouse, and that's the one that's more like a chicken. So that would be that one. Um, all right. What does anybody think about some of these other ones here? Like here's one with the thumb. We already talked about that one. The possum, um, <clears throat> okay, and uh, and this one, beaver, okay, and then this one, of course, would be the moose. And they, they do have um, one thing that a lot of people don't understand. They go, "Wow, that's weird." You know, had a pig or you know a deer walk across their property, and they're leaving four front. Well, they do have four toes. It's just you don't always. You usually see two because. Two of the toes are here, and two of them are back here. And you'll only see it if they're climbing and pushing, or if they're in snow or pushed down in mud. And then you won't see those other two. So, um, the, the wild pig, or the, you know, the I do. I think I have it in one of these. I have a pig, um, and right yeah and you can see them and they're they're going to be different than a deer it's kind of hard to describe i maybe i'll try and find it in here and then maybe they have a i just i see stuff i know things i just sometimes can't quantify it you know um so yes yeah they're a little wider and then it, once again it depends on the size of the pig you know i mean there are so many you know, from these little uh, personal pan piggies to the big ones, you know. Um, so, <clears throat> um, okay. And what about what about that one right there? Well, it does kind of look. I do have a tree frog in my car. We could compare it. Um, <clears throat> Okay, it's uh, it's this one right here. Yeah, it's it's a rabbit, and it's the front foot, but it's all sprayed splayed out. That one is very tricky, um, and that's the snowshoe hair. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, so you can see all those foot combinations. I mean, that one is just that's sneaky, um, but. Um, but when you're when you're looking at them, um, you know, like there's raccoon, you know, because it kind of looks more like a hand. So whenever you're looking at tracks, um, measuring it, like if you ever take a picture of it, you got a quarter in your pocket, put it down there, a dollar bill, or even in a lot of these books, if you have it with you, they'll actually have a little uh, little little measuring thing on it, you know, and you can take it. I don't like to lay my books down next to scat, you know, so I don't want to get anything on them. But, um.